Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome everyone into the ISCAS Research Support Webinar Series 2023. This is our 13th live session for this year. So before we start, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Vinolia, and I'm the Marketing and Event Coordinator for ISCA. Uh, today, before we start, I would like us to at least adhere to the rules that I'm going to be uh, telling you while we're in this session. Uh, firstly, I'm going to request for everyone, everyone except for our speaker, to please mute themselves so that we can avoid disruption within the meeting or the session. So uh, secondly, if you do have a question during the meeting, please write your question in a chat box so that you don't forget it. But if you'd like to uh, present your own question, you can just wait until the presentation is over and I know I could not hear you. We can't hear you, Venolia. Okay, apologies uh, for my network. Um, I'm having some network issues. I just hope it won't happen again. Uh, like I was saying, um, okay, I'm just gonna take you through some housekeeping rules once more uh, before we start with the session. I'm going to request for everyone to please mute themselves except for our speaker to avoid any noise or any background noise. And secondly, for those who have any questions during the session, you are kindly requested to write your questions in the chat box, and then we will go through them uh, once the presentation is over. Or if you do want to present your own question to the speaker directly, you can just wait for the presentation to be over and then you can be given an opportunity to raise your hand and interact with the speaker directly. Uh, today we do have our guest speaker. Uh, her name is Dr. Yavana Rani, who is an associate uh, professor of MBA in the decision science area. Since uh, receiving her MBA and PhD in management, she has devoted her career to research and training she is also she also has a master's degree in structural engineering she is the university rank holder in mba she has 16 years of teaching experience and dr rani has received the young scientist fellowship award from tamil nadu state council uh, for science and technology she has completed her fellowship from india institute of science in Bangalore. She is the lifetime member in India Society for Technical Education. Uh, Dr. Yavana Rani has done two research projects sponsored by Indian Council for Social Science and Research. She is the UBA coordinator for the project under UNED Bharat Abhiyan Scheme Government of India. 
I'm not going to go through all her bio. She will just um, brief herself uh, once she's been given the opportunity to do her presentation. And um, Dr. Yavana Rani, she is uh, from the Jane University of, um, I mean, Jane University in Bangalore, all the way from India. So I'm going to take this opportunity to give it to uh, Dr. Yavana Rani to brief us about herself. And um, once she's done with that, she can just take us through her presentation. Dr. Yavana Rani, you're welcome and you can now uh, take over. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Yulia. Uh, so it's my pleasure to be here with you. Uh, I hope this is my uh, second time that I'm uh, with you today. So uh, thank you, uh, the African Institute for Supply Chain Research, uh, the uh, management and the faculty members for providing me this opportunity again. So I'm really happy to be with you and uh, the scholars and the professors here. So thank you so much. So I am Dr. Yavana. Uh, as Vinolia said, I'll just uh, uh, give a brief introduction about me. Uh, and anyway, she has given some uh, uh, a good, a wonderful introduction about me. But uh, I'll add up uh, some more things. Uh, uh, whatever uh, Vinolia has missed. So uh, uh, I'm with the Decision Science Department uh, in Jane Deemed University, Bangalore, uh, India. So actually, uh, I basically am an engineering graduate uh, with a master's in structural engineering and a PhD in management. And uh, recently I have submitted my second PhD in engineering. So, by this uh, month and I'll be having a viva also. So uh, research part, as I told that uh, I have some uh, uh, the two projects that I have done for the government of India. And one more thing I would like to add is, uh, uh, actually I tried for uh, a joint research project with the uh, South African Social Science Council and I've applied for that actually with our Indian government and social science uh, uh, council of South Africa, but unfortunately I didn't get, I hope the next time I'll be getting that uh, because I have some uh, good uh, rapport with the South African uh, uh, professors and uh, all the people here, the scholars, and especially with the African Institute for Social Change Research. So I uh, hope I'll be getting the project uh, soon and uh, I'll be visiting maybe uh, visiting South uh, Africa by the UR Institute. So I'm waiting for that. So, and apart from that, I have also, you know, uh, you know held some uh, administrative roles like the dean, director, dean positions there. So presently I'm in teaching and the research, I'm just concentrating on my research. So that's about uh, me. And I have visited some, uh, uh, you know, in South Africa, not in South Africa, I have, uh, in African continent, I can say I have visited uh, uh, the great uh, Egypt. Uh, I have been invited as a guest speaker in uh, uh, Alexandria. So I have already visited your continent, uh, but not South Africa. Soon I'll be coming over there. So uh, always I have some good uh, record with uh, the South African people and the African uh, people. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Vinulia, for this uh, introduction and uh, the opportunity. So, shall I uh, start my presentation now? Yes, please. Yes. So, uh, today my uh, topic is about the research methods and uh, statistical analysis using SPSS. So, we all know that how this uh, research uh, plays an important uh, role uh, in everyone's, you know, uh, the uh, especially in the academic side, you know, uh, what the professors are now, uh, they are the academics, the research, they are integrated now. So the scholars, they have many doubts uh, related to the statistical uh, methods 
how to apply. So they are very good in the uh, theoretical part, but when when they want to apply uh, the part, uh, apply the concept into a you know uh, in research or any statistical analysis, definitely all this you know, should be a, it's a problem for even uh, the professors also nowadays, right? So always we have some uh, uh, aversion towards the statistical methods. But uh, this uh, SPSS is a very good, uh, you know, software or we can say a package where uh, we don't have no need to have a uh, coding skills for uh, using the software. So it is a very simple for the software, or you can say it's a graphical user interface. That means that uh, without a coding knowledge, you can easily access. You can you can be a master of this SPSS. So it's a very good software where we, our uh, social science research uh, is, we can use this SPSS software. So uh, before getting into the uh, this SPSS, I would like to uh, tell about the basic concepts of the research methods. So in SPSS, so SPSS is the thing but the uh, statistical package for social science. Uh, because, uh, you know, SPSS is a commercial and there are many softwares which are equivalent to SPSS and it's an open source software. Uh, but uh, when compared to other softwares, this SPSS, it, we can do a lot of uh, statistical analysis with the help of SPSS. So first, uh, before getting into SPSS, uh, let me first tell what are the research methods, uh, you know, uh, the basic uh, concepts that you should know uh, to apply your uh, concepts or you to apply the statistical tools in SPSS. So we all know that uh, the basic concept, what is a population, what is a sample, uh, variable, parameter, statistics. So we all know that it's very difficult uh, to have, uh, to do a research with the whole population. So normally, whenever uh, we want to do a research, we take a sample. We, it, why it is difficult is, you know, uh, it might be a time constraint, or we need a lot of money to carry out the project. So instead, what we do, we always take a sample from the whole population. Suppose if you want to do a research uh, in, um, you know, in our academic side, um, um, the, the placement, placement just happening, uh, the, or the quality of students in uh, uh, South Africa, we can say, uh, or we can say about the supply chain, uh, supply chain, how uh, the supply chain, uh, you know, it's uh, very efficient. So what we do is we can't go and uh, collect the data from each and every uh, the logistic uh, partner. So what we do is we select some samples out of that and we carry out the research as we do our blood sampling, right? We can't take a blood, uh, every, all the blood and uh, uh, we don't, we can't do an, uh, a, a, a diagnosis with the help of it. So what we do is we normally take a sample and we do the diagnosis, we uh, test the blood and we just make an inference, we diagnose the disease, right? It's similar kind of, we take the sample, we just uh, test the samples with the help of some statistical methods. And finally, what we do, we generalize it to the population. So we can generalize it to the whole population. So that's why this uh, uh, population and sample. Uh, so normally we say that as a sampling uh, concepts. Okay. So variable is nothing but uh, the characteristics of any individual or object. So suppose, for example, if you take some, uh, uh, if you want to measure, the, if you want to measure the, uh, the effectiveness of the logistic partners, right? So in that case, you will be coming out with some uh, factors which measures the effectiveness or which measures the uh, the IQ of the students. So that variables, that, that factors are called the variables. And what is parameter is nothing but the population uh, characteristics. That is suppose if you are measuring the uh, uh, measures of uh, set of tendons like mean, median, more of the whole population, then it is called a parameter. When you do the same, finding the mean, median, more or standard deviation for a sample, then it is called a statistic that measure is called a statistic. So this is very, very important. There are two types of statistics. One is the descriptive. The second one is inferential statistics. 
So whenever you do a research, so whatever research it may be, it, let, let it be a, a medical research or let it be a social science research or let it be a, a engineering study, a production, whatever research is, the methodology is safe for all of the research. So here, uh, even if you take a medical research, so what they do, they start with the descriptive statistics. Then they go with the inferential. So these are the main basic, we can say, basic type of statistics is descriptive and inferential. So apart from that, we do, we do have some you know, other statistics called uh, uh, predictive uh, analytics, we can say predictive statistics, we predict the future, predictive. So, but these are the two main uh, uh, types of uh, statistics. So what is descriptive statistics? Descriptive is what is actually there, we are just presenting the data. Suppose if you're collecting, if you're collecting the uh, IQ level of the students, the class, okay? So you just, or if you just collect the uh, number of students, the how many male students, female students. So all these mean, median, mode, these are some of the measures which uh, describes the descriptive statistics. So what is actually there, just presenting that data, organizing the data and presenting the data is called the descriptive statistics. Then what is inferential statistics? Inferential is, it is nothing but hypothesis testing. So we all know that what is hypothesis testing, right? So that is a main uh, part of any research. But as uh, research, uh, whether it may be a PhD research or any research, so it should have two, two types of analysis. One is descriptive anal analysis, and the second one is inferential analysis. So descriptive, we find all mean, median, mode, frequency, uh, et cetera, et cetera, in that standard deviation, range, variance, et cetera, in the descriptive statistics. But when it comes to inferential statistics, this is called the hypothesis testing. So when we do a hypothesis testing, is why you want to do a hypothesis testing? You all know what is hypothesis testing, right? Can I get the uh, um, chat box? You all, I hope you all know what is hypothesis. Hypothesis, what is hypothesis? Or any any hypothesis uh, uh, statistics that you know? I hope some uh, uh, research scholars are also here, right? Research scholars in here? Any, any hypothesis testing? Any statistics that you know? Confirmation and disconfirmation of theories. Very good. Uh, Sarah is given confirmation and disconfirmation of theories. So hypothesis to check the relation between variables already established by earlier research. Very good. And I want to my test. Yeah, very good, great. Principal component, yeah, very good. Inferential statistics, very good. Uh, so thank you. See, inferential hypothesis, uh, as somebody has mentioned, uh, to check the relationship between variables already established by earlier research. So it means that suppose when you want to conduct a hypothesis testing, uh, you need you need uh, a back data, or we can say the past record, so that we based on the past data, we fix the hypothesis or we frame the hypothesis, right? Then we prove that hypothesis or disprove that hypothesis. So hypothesis is nothing but a assumption. So you assume something, how you assume based on the past research. If we don't have any research on that, then what do you do? If you don't have any past research, you know, uh, Mr. Gulsar has given that, uh, to check the relationship with, uh, between uh, the variables uh, in by earlier research established. If you don't have any past uh, uh, data, then how you fix the uh, hypothesis? Yes. And what you some very good examples of exploratory research, yes. Exploratory research. Exploratory research is very good. Uh, Gulsar has given the answer. Exploratory research. So, 
by exploring sometimes you know uh, even the some uh, uh, you know the decisions has been taken by intuition even the top uh, company ceo even in usa also uh, the top ceos they make decision out of their intuition even the data has been playing a great role nowadays to uh, make decisions but the 50 percentage of the companies in us uh, the ceos they make decision based on the intuition so sometimes uh, based on the intuition they fix the hypothesis so how about uh, the intuition or we can say by their experience by the experience uh, they fix the hypothesis that is they assume something this is called an null hypothesis they prove that hypothesis or disprove that hypothesis by using the statistical analysis. So drawing conclusions about a population based on the sample data. So you collect a sample, you are making some analysis with the sample, you are testing the samples, then you generalize it to the population. That's what the so population descriptive statistics we make and that uh, estimates is called the parameter or uh, when sample if you find the mean median mode etc etc then that is called the statistic so we make uh, with the help of sample we make the inferential uh, that's called the inferential statistic so here you can see the descriptive statistics some of the measures so these are the measures of central tendency I told mean median mode harmonic mean geometric mean Okay, all these comes under descriptive statistics. The basic uh, statistics or basic analysis you should start with. Okay, so uh, I hope uh, uh, everyone has uh, you know, uh, come out with a question uh, uh, to collect the data. So after collecting the data, you feed the data into the system or you feed the data into the Excel sheet. So what is the first step you have to do is you have to start the descriptive analysis. So you have to find uh, the frequency, mean, Median, whatever it is applicable, you should find. Then the measures of dispersion is something, but uh, these are some of the measures that you can find. So these are the two things that you have to find under the descriptive statistics. So all research should will start with the descriptive analysis. And inferential statistics, as someone has clearly mentioned, that hypothesis testing, Z test, F test, T test, ANOVA. So all the other parametric tests we can see. Will Cox and rank test, sign test, man-made new test. So these are non-parametric tests and regression analysis. All these are the inferential statistics. So these are some of the notations that you can see, population and sample. So while using those, you know, so when we want to do it manually, we use all the formula, but uh, SPSS doesn't require it, it's all inbuilt. So this is, uh, 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 I mean, the uh, back end of uh, the SPSS. So when the population is too large, we don't go for a, a population uh, census. So we take a sample and we collect the data from the sample. We organize the data, we analyze the data, then we make some inference from the sample and we make an inference which represents the population. So we have two types of uh, data. One is qualitative data and one is quantitative data. Okay. Can you give some examples for quantitative data in the chat box, please? Examples for quantitative quantity. We say that it's a quantity, right? Examples. Yes, yield of maize. Very good. A simple example. Quantity. Weight. Very good. Lawrence is given. Weight, height, okay, all all or uh, the quantity, quantitative data, okay. Any any uh, qualitative data, so we can you can easily measure. We have a measure to uh, measure for this quantitative data for weight kg in kilogram. We weigh that yield might be in tons, okay. So we have some measure knowledge level. Very good. Kulsa has given knowledge level, opinion, beauty perception gross domestic product gross domestic product is it a is it a qualitative or quantitative uh, actually gross domestic product gdp gdp is a quantitative or qualitative it's, quant it's quantitative it's, yes very good it's a quantitative right 
So whatever we can measure in terms of statistics is quantitative and you can easily measure it like with the help of, you know, you can make a count for quantitative data. We can apply only the uh, descriptive statistics like, you know, uh, the mean, median, mode, frequency kind of uh, statistical tools should be applied to the quantitative data set. Uh, qualitative, yes, many of them have uh, mentioned uh, uh, perception, opinion, beauty. So let me ask how you measure the beauty of uh, 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 Lawrence. Can you please tell how you measure the beauty of a, a, a girl or a lady? How you measure? Any anyone else? Sorry. Oh, you won't measure. Fine. Okay. How you how you say that she is beautiful? Or we can say how you measure the IQ of a student. Question. How you measure how you tell a, a lady is very beautiful? Through semantic differential scale. Semantic differential scale is you know, comparing the beauty, you can say semantic differential. How you measure a beauty of a girl? You can, you would have come across some many beautiful ladies. Uh, beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. Okay. So that I'm asking your perception about the beauty. So how the judges are judging the, for, I mean, they're coming out with uh, Miss World, Miss Universe, how they measure. So they come out with Lawrence, her beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. That's very fine. So her appearance, good. Her appearance is the one factor. It's the only one factor that you measure the beauty. The units of measure subjective and varied. Yes, good. So what we do is we list out the factors coming up with the criteria. Very good. So we list out the factors. We list out the factor and we convert that factor into a quantitative measure. So I give for appearance, I give one to five, whether she is very good or very uh, to the other extreme, not good. Okay, so we are converting the qualitative data into a quantitative data. That's why we are measuring attitude scale. Yes, so you are fixing. So quantitative data can be directly, you can apply the statistical tool. But in qualitative data, you should convert the qualitative data into a quantitative measure. So that what we are doing, like perception, etc., etc. So we list out the factors. We convert that into an, a scale, like you can say, uh, like a scale, like a scale. We are coming out with a scaling, right? So we give one for low and five for uh, the higher side or seven point scale or five point scale. So we convert the qualitative data into a quantitative data. Okay, so very fine. So this is how that uh, you have to organize the data set first. So what I suggest is uh, a questionnaire should contain two parts. One part A should be your all nominal kind of data where you can all the quantitative data. Quantitative data should be in part A. That is your, uh, you can say, uh, the, uh, what is that? We start with the, uh, the male, female question, right? Uh, then we ask for the education background all the uh, geographical data or the, uh, the basic uh, information about the customers we ask. That should be in part A. So part B should contain your actual objective of your research. If your objective is to find the perception of the services uh, quality, services quality, you want to measure the service quality of the tourism uh, operators, tourist, tourist operators, okay? Or if you want to find the um, you know, the service quality of uh, the uh, banks there or the hotels or restaurants, okay? That, that if that is the objective, that should come in the part B, where that all a qualitative measure that has to be converted into a quantitative measure, like, uh, like not, normally we go with the like a scaling, right? So they look at scaling. Why we are applying, why we uh, include that like scaling in our researches? 
only for that qualitative that is uh, you know the liquor type of skills if you uh, include in your data set or include in your questionnaire then we can apply all probability statistics we can apply that all the many uh, statistical measures tools can be applied so you should divide your question as part a and part b quantitative in part a and qualitative converting into quantitative should be in part b that is your objective should be in part b so these are some of the uh, representative of uh, you know the pictorial representation of data set quantitative uh, we can go with the histogram of this and the qualitative data set it's a categorical uh, data that uh, we normally do with bar and pie diagram um, so uh, this one is uh, you know uh, summarizing a raw data set on a quantitative variable uh, you can you can study the central tendency of any data set and uh, these are some of the you know uh, how to um, uh, apply your statistics for your data set and what statistics to be applied so the next thing is probability and non-probability sampling. This is very important. I hope you all have heard about this. Uh, so probability, if you apply, so how we uh, select the samples, how we select the samples. So what is probability sampling, anyone? How we select the samples. Uh, a question is, yeah, I, I can answer your question now. Can descriptive design use both quantitative and qualitative data set? No. Uh, see, uh, if suppose, uh, for example, descriptive design, uh, mean, mean, uh, we can say mean, a uh, median uh, mode can be done for the both qualitative data. See, suppose uh, in qualitative data, you have the uh, five-point scale, okay? Five-point scale. And uh, you, you want to uh, find, you can't find the frequencies for that. You can find the mean of that. You can apply, you can apply the descriptive design of qualitative data set. So what is probability? Probability, equal chance of selecting the samples from the population. It's an equal, probably, you know, what is a probability, right? Probability is nothing but tossing a coin, equal chance of getting head and tail. Similarly, probability sampling is equal chance of the uh, respondents to be selected. Okay, there is no bias here. Probability has no bias. So the output or the, uh, you know, the result from the probability sampling is perfect when compared to non-probability sampling. Non probability sampling is a biased result that we get. So, here are some of the methods that we use to select the samples from the population. Simple random sample, this uh, samples like we, we uh, it's a lot system. I write it in a paper, put all the uh, names of the students in the class, I put it in a box, I take randomly, I call someone, and it it's called a lottery method. Right? Simple random. Otherwise, what I do, I have the, uh, you know, I select the people who are appearing the black shirts in the class. So simply randomly I'm selecting. Okay, so that's a uh, it's an unbiased one. Uh, stratified stratified means as grouping grouping the entire class or grouping the entire population into some uh, no. some uh, groups more, more. like based on their based on the geographical area or based on their age or based on their uh, education, we group the people. We group the people and from each group, we select some samples. Systematic random sample, it's uh, suppose, for example, every if I if I have the list of uh, uh, list of uh, this uh, population, uh, let us say uh, I want to do uh, and uh, I want to find out the uh, customer satisfaction of uh, uh, the uh, customers uh, uh, using uh, the Honda City car, okay? So I have the list of uh, buyers that uh, who bought a Honda City car. So what I do is I have the list. From the list, I select every fifth, every fifth customer, fifth customer, 10th customer, 15th customer. So we have some system to be followed to select the uh, samples. 
cluster sampling. Again, cluster is, is something, but again, it is similar to that, that of uh, stratified sampling. But here, the clusters is of the same, the clusters, the people within that group or, or will have the same uh, characteristics. So that's a cluster sampling. And non probability is, uh, you know, it's a convenience, it's a biased uh, one, convenience based on the researcher's convenience. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm convenient. I want to go out people this are coming in front of me. I'll just take it. I'm based on my convenience or the researcher's convenience. I collect the data. Those who are coming to my cabin, I collect the data from them. Those who are, you know, uh, so my convenience based on that, it, it, it won't be, you uh, know, it won't give us the exact uh, uh, correct output of, for the result, for the research. Quota sampling is nothing but we fix a quota that is a 30 percentage from male or 20 percentage from, uh, you know, uh, the students, uh, 10 percentage from the uh, uh, top level executives, something we fix some uh, percentage of proportionate uh, quota on that. And judgment sampling is based on the judgment of the researcher. So I judge that if I get the data from the particular person, then uh, I may get a good result. I may get a, uh, I mean, a positive uh, result for my study. That's a judgment sampling. That is also a biased one. And what is snowball sampling? Anyone knows what is snowball sampling? What is snowball? Very good. Someone has given us a lottery method. Right. So let's check some things. Chance of being picked for the study. Very good, Lawrence. Very good. Uh, Ada, yes, uh, a referral. It's not like a rumor. You can say we can say a referral. Ada Kanini has given a referral. Uh, suppose I want to do a, a do a, a, who is good in a, who are doing more online shopping. So uh, some sensitive studies, you know, they won't reveal uh, openly. So through referrals, we make some studies. Uh, so somebody can say, somebody uh, may say, Jonah is uh, doing more online shopping. So if I, uh, if I uh, meet Jonah and uh, I can get the, uh, uh, the responses, then Jonah may refer Gulsar. Gulsar is doing the same. He is doing more online shopping. So I go to Gulsar and Gulsar may uh, refer to uh, no, somebody else, uh, Edda. Okay. So this through reference, we collect the data. It's called a snowball slam. So these are some of the sampling techniques. So what I would like to uh, recommend here is a better book for probability sampling, uh, because more, uh, you know, you can apply the statistical tools to get more inferences. So the errors in sample, uh, we have sampling error, non-sampling error. Um, the sampling, the suppose, for example, we uh, take, you know, uh, while selecting the samples, some errors may occur, okay? And uh, we won't select the correct samples. And non-sampling error is uh, nothing but the technical error, or while entering the data into the system, we may, you know, omit something, it's a non-sampling error. So these errors should be avoided. Uh, the main thing is sample size. Can anyone tell how you find the sample size? Can we find the sample size? At what stage you have to, you know, the initial stage you have to find the sample size, right? So how do you fix the sample size? It's very important in research, right? We can't just like that, we can't say, we can say, we can have uh, 500 samples or 600 samples. You should not do that. Is there any, any uh, no, we have many formula to calculate, right? So how do you select the sample size? Fix the sample size. Anyone? Do you have any idea? This is a very important uh, uh, part in your research. Any idea? Yes or no? Why for S? Yes or no? Determine the sample power. Determine the sample power. How? Oh. Oh. Anyone else? 
Okay. So how to find the subject? Said Lawrence, is there any question? Answers from your side, good sir. Lawrence. So how to find the sample size that's, how to find the sample size is very much important. So we all know that what's a pilot study, correct? We all know what is a pilot study. Uh, I think it depends on the research question. Um, study design. No, even though a research question or study design, study design has to tell how much the, uh, sample size should be and uh, you know uh, how you calculate how you have arrived at the sample size so let me explain how to uh, arrive at your sample size for example uh, you're doing your pilot study before uh, you know, going for the main study so we always do a pilot study i hope you all know what is a pilot study correct they can use a uh, formula for it. Yeah, yeah, there are many formula, but when many formula, this is one of the formula that I have given here. There are many formula to calculate, but the basic, this is a very simple formula, just you can listen. So we have to do us, uh, we have to go for a pilot study. So pilot study, normally uh, we do a, a pilot study with some 50 or two, 75, let us take a 50 or 75. Um, respondents. So we collect the, we design a questionnaire, we have given to 50 customers, we have got it back. So we have some 50 responses, 50 sheets, uh, okay, 50 questionnaires filled up. So I am entering all the data into the uh, SPS software or Excel. So what I should do is I have to find the, uh, that is, uh, we, we don't want to enter the, uh, the frequencies like uh, the age or uh, uh, you know, the education, qualification. We don't want to enter all those things. We have to enter only the objective part of our research. So perception of the uh, perception of the customers about, or customer satisfaction of the customers uh, using the Honda City cars. So we have some listed factors that five point scale this, that all the 50 customers data has to be entered into the uh, space of software. So what we should do is we have to find the standard deviation you can see here, yes. Yes, this sample standard deviation from pilot study of 50 samples. So the thing is you have to find the average as well as the sample standard deviation. So this is some example that I have quoted here. The sample standard deviation is 0.665 from the pilot study. So this is a, a one of the, uh, the formula to calculate your sample size. Z into S divided by E the whole square. So Z is nothing but the standardized value corresponding to the confidence level. So you all know that 95% confidence level. It means we allow 5% error. All social science research, we allow an error maximum up to 20%. So normally we allow for our research, we take 5% either 5% or 1%. Okay. So here we have taken uh, error of 5% because every, every you know, the social science research can't be, uh, you know, 100% uh, uh, errorless, you can, you can say. So we say that 5% is a level of significance. That is that uh, permissible error is 5%. Uh, how much error that we can uh, permit in a medical uh, research, in medical science, any idea, how much error? I told you for social science research, we can give up to 20%. For medical science? Oh, one percentage is acceptable in medical science. Well, sir. One percentage, is it? You accept it? Instead of operating this, instead of uh, no, operating uh, even less than, no, okay. See, medical research, we can't accept even 0 0.0001 percentage. It should be error free, right? Instead of uh, giving one uh, uh, for uh, injection for our flu, if they give injection for something else, is, is it fine? No, instead of you know, instead of operating left leg, if they operate right leg, it's fine. 
No. So zero percentage error, zero percentage for medical science. But in social sciences, it can be up to 20 percentage because of people's mentality, you know, it, it keeps on changing. Now I say it's this problem. I change my mind the next day and say, no, it is not good. Right? So the people's mentality is, is unstable. I cannot change also unstable. So uh, what I mean to say is the Z value. So Z value is a constant of 95%. It's a standard value. We all know that. 95%, it is 1.96. It's a standard value. It is a table value. So the only thing in this formula, we are going to find the S value. S value have to be formed from the sample, uh, uh, from the pilot study. Okay. So this we know, S value we know, and E is the acceptable error. Error is 5 percentage. If it is 95, it is 5 percentage. If it is 99, then it is 1 percentage. Okay. So we all know this value. I'm substituting all this Z. Z is 1.96. Z value, S value is this one divided by 0 0.05 whole square. So my sample size is 683 now. Hope you got it. So after your pilot study, after collecting the 50 samples, then you decide your sample size. So you have already done 50. So the remaining you have to do. Right? Remaining how much? 33, 633, correct? 633 plus 50, 683. Your sample size is 16. I hope you got this. So these are the stages in data analysis. Uh, we all know this. Uh, any questions? Any questions in uh, sample size determination? Okay, fine. So these are the, we know all this editing, coding. So we collect the data, uh, we edit the data because of, it was, uh, suppose there, there is any missing data, we just edit it. And coding the data is like giving, uh, SPSS, it accepts only the numbers. It won't accept the string. So you have to code the data. Data entry and analysis has to be done. So based on the analysis, we interpret the data. I quickly go through all these things. So, uh, yes, one question on SD for sample. So yes, please. Uh, so what's your question? Gulsan, you can you can you can unmute and ask. Otherwise, you can uh, give it in chat box. Um, uh, uh, how to calculate SD on which statements? We have to calculate SD. Ah, see, so that I told uh, the it, it, the SD should be calculated on the scaling Likert scale. Suppose you have some twenty statements, you have some twenty statements, and on a Likert scale. Correct. So select all those values, find the standard deviation. I'll show it. Uh, I'll have I'll show a demo of that. Okay. How to find it. I hope you understood. Good, sir. Okay. I, I'll show that. Uh, 20 statements, all the five point scale, all the values will be there. Take all the 20 statements, find the standard deviation. That's all. Then you can get the value. So statistical inference, uh, theory of estimation and testing of hypothesis. So normally we go with the uh, hypothesis testing, parametric and non-parametric test. Uh, this is very important. Uh, one thing is sample size determination. Second one is the uh, measurement scales. So we all know what is a nominal, ordinal, interval and ratio scale. Any idea about nominal scale? These are the basic thing that you should know before applying any statistics. Nominal scale, gender, I'm measuring. I'm just calculating how many. Naming, uh, yeah, naming, yes. Uh, just, uh, I give uh, one as male and two as female. Okay, gender, one as male and two as female. Is it, uh, this one carries weightage for me? It means male or dominant than female? Will you accept that? If I give one for male and two for female, 
male is dominant? No. So it's just here a number. One represents male and two represents female. That's all. So that case, that type of questions are called nominal scale. You can see here. Numbers assigned first, second, third. Okay, some numbers be assigned. So you can see here the example. What is your gender? Male, female. We give one, two. And you can see what is your hair color? One, brown. So I, I just click something. Okay, four represents gray. It doesn't mean a uh, gray hair, those who have gray hair or you know dominant than those who have a brown. It doesn't mean so it's simply a representation number, just simply represents one means brown. So that type of scale is called nominal scale. For this type of scale, you have to apply, you have to find only the frequencies. No other statistical measure can be applied for this type of scale. Only you can find how many number of female, how many number of male. And you can, if you want to do a cross uh, tabulation that you want to, you want to uh, make a cross tabulation, how many male have a brown hair, how many female have a uh, black hair. In that case, you can go for you can go for a chi square test. It is a cross tabulation you make. You can just compare how many male have brown, how many female have black hair. You can just compare it. So simply for each question, here you have to apply only the frequency table. So what is uh, ordinal? Ordinal is just I'm ordering, ranking, ranking the product. First product is a brand of pesticides. I'm ranking the Rambo brand as first place. RIB, second, kill off, third place, and you go. So I am just ordering the uh, pesticides here. I'm ordering the uh, the cars. I like uh, I like uh, Mercedes, Benz first, and my second preference is Audi. A third is the Honda, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So just I'm ordering. It's called ordinal scale. So in this ordinal scale also, you have to find out the frequencies. This we know that what is it? This is an interval scale. Otherwise, we say that it's a Likert scale, Likert scale, or Likert scale, or Likert scale. Okay. So why it's called this? The distance should be equal one to two, two to three. three. It can't be one to three, and again three to four, four to five. So the distance between all the scales should be equal. It's an interval scale, equal interval. Okay, so for this type of scale, we can apply all the, all we can apply, uh, you know, we should not apply for this type of scale, we should not apply frequencies. We have to apply weighted average method, or we can apply mean median, we can find mean uh, median, we can apply, we can find the standard deviation for this scale. And uh, any other uh, hypothesis testing uh, can be done for this interval scale. Next, what is ratio scale? You can see the difference. I'm just actually the age. What is your age? If it is an open-ended question, then it is a ratio scale. So normally what we do is we club the age into, we group it, right? Age uh, between one and 25, two and second is uh, 25 to 35. So three is over 35, we group the age, and that type of scale is called nominal scale, but the same age is if it is an open ender, then it is called a ratio scale. It means the ratio scale has some base. So the age starts from, it has a base of one, right? It has a base of the first day, right? Weight, height, you can say height, weight, all of the ratio scale, it has some base. So I hope you understood. So these are the basic, uh, uh, you know, four types of scales uh, you should know to, uh, you know, uh, to uh, apply what type of uh, statistics uh, to that particular question. So uh, let me quickly can see here uh, examples I have given. Uh, this is an appropriate statistic table. Anyway, I'll share this PPT with you. So for nominal scale, uh, you can you can go with the uh, chi square, Kramos contingency, uh, runs binomial, all this nominal scale. Or no uh, hypothesis testing can be done for the nominal scale. Ordinal scale, you can go with the median, the quartile range, all the non-parametric tests. 
for these two, the non-parametric test you can apply for nominal and ordinal. But if it is an interval and ratio, you can go with the hypothesis testing and mean, standard deviation, correlation, regression, uh, factor analysis, everything can be done for the interval and the ratio scale. Uh, scale evaluation. So we all know what is a reliability, correct? Any idea about reliability? That's a basic thing. So these are some of the basic things you should know. One is sample size, uh, sampling technique, sample size, and uh, the scales, type of scales. Then how we start our research uh, analysis. You collected everything, you finalized, you have collected a 683 questionnaires, you fed the data into the uh, SPSA software. What's the first thing you should do is you have to find the reliability of the responses. Reliability of the responses. Okay. It means whatever we have collected from the customers is reliable or not. How we check? So normally in the questionnaire, we make some negative questions. Negative questions. So the same statement will be, suppose if you give a positive statement, the same statement at the end of, uh, uh, I mean, the last question or uh, some in, in middle, we make a negative statement of the same question. So if a customer gives a or, uh, fifth uh, rank for that, or if he ticks the four, five for that, the negative question should carry one, right? He should have given the uh, mark as one. So we feed the data and we check the reliability. Can uh, uh, anyone knows what is the measure for reliability in SPSS? Good, Cronbach Alpha, very good. Cronbach Alpha, so how much the value should be? Reliability is nothing but the responses reliability. And what is validity? Validity, uh, it's, yeah, it's 0.7, it's not 70, it's, uh, uh, even a 0.6 can also be accepted, but the standard level, if it is more than 0.7, then it is fine. It is highly rare. 0 0.7, 0 0.8 is highly reliable. Even sometimes, you know, some uh, research also accept 0 0.6 also. Okay. What is validity? Validity. Validity is for, you know, the main thing is uh, we check the questions. You can say how meaningful, whether it really uh, uh, measures what we want to measure, what it's supposed to measure. You can say, I want to measure the, uh, I want to measure the uh, customer satisfaction. Okay, whether the questions what we have framed really measures what it has to be, it has it is supposed to measure. So that is called uh, the uh, validity. So we have many types of validity here, uh, validation checks here. So normally what we do is, uh, how is the measure reliability done using the uh, I'll just uh, quickly do a demo, okay? Uh, one, uh, and in another two minutes, I'll complete this, then I'll go to the SPSS demo for some 15 minutes. What an instrument is made for is, yes, very good, cool, sir, you're right for validity. So validity is for the questionnaire and reliability is for the responses. Hope you understood. Uh, how is the measure of reliability? I'll make a demo for this. Uh, um, so Ada, Kalini, I'll just show a demo how you measure. So uh, normally what we do uh, for uh, validity is I, we do a factor analysis. So what we do in factor analysis, we just reduce the number of factors. How we reduce the number of factors? Why we reduce the number of factors? Because we, by applying the factor analysis, we come to know that particular factor is not a valid uh, term or valid question with what we it's supposed to measure. So in that case, we delete that particular uh, statement so in order to improve our uh, validity value. Okay. Uh, so, so we all know that the steps for hypothesis testing. This is the uh, no, it's applicable for all the tests, Z test, T test, and our et cetera, et cetera. For all the tests, these are the five steps that you have to follow for any research hypothesis and alternate hypothesis. The level of significance you have to fix based on the test, uh, whether it is a Z test or T test or uh, correlation, regression, or you fix the you know, formula here. 
facts and the interpretation and the final is your question. Okay. So these are the, some of the examples. Uh, okay, so while we do it manually, we normally, you know, uh, we compare the calculated value with the table value. But in SPSS, what we do is we find the, uh, we only, uh, we see only the uh, significance value there. It's just an old of uh, the manual uh, calculation. Right, to apply two tail and one tail. Yes. So, good question. Uh, suppose if you want to test a hypothesis, let us take, uh, uh, I want to test a hypothesis. Uh, a mean height of the students in the class is above of 160 centimeter. My hypothesis is mean height is greater than 160 centimeter. My alternate is not greater. Than. Correct. So greater than, if it is greater than, means it is a one tailed. Greater than means it, it falls on the right hand side. Correct. We know that if it is greater than, it falls on the right hand side. Suppose if we say that we want to test the hypothesis whose mean height of the students or the mean sales per day is 100 dozen of uh, soap or 100 or uh, 100 dozens of uh, you know a mean sales per day mean sales per day is 100 uh, dozens per day okay if it is equal and the alternate hypothesis is not equal okay equal not equal so it means Either it may be more than 100 or it may be less than 100. Okay. It may be. So we, we want to check whether the mean sales is more than the. Um, if it is more than, then it is a one tail test. And if we say simply mu equal to 100, mu not equal to 100, it means it, we don't know whether it, it, is, it, it is less than 100 or greater than 100. We don't know that. So in that case, we have to go for two tailed test. Is validity measured in SPSS? Yes, validity. One validity measure is done with the help of SPSS. That measure is the factor analysis. Hope you understood. One measure. One validity measure. So here we have seen, you can see. Uh, You can see internal validation, external validation, content validation. This is called the content validation. This content validation can be done with the help of SPSS. That measure is the factor analysis. The others, you know, check, you can just uh, know the other validation. Normally what we do is we keep a question to an expert, okay? Uh, and uh, the construct, construct uh, validation checks can be done. And the internal validation, some experts can give that. So there are a lot of validations, uh, you know, that we have to carry out. This content validation can be done with the help of his pieces by using the factor analysis. So this statement is very important for SPSS uh, uh, inference. So we make some inferences based on this. So we can see the p-value based on this p-value to accept or reject. And it is highly significant. If the value lies between this and this, then it is significant. If the value is greater than 0 0.05, then it is not significant. So this is a, uh, a standard mode uh, to make the inferences. Okay. So uh, quickly, I just uh, open up my uh, SPSS screen and I give some demo for that. Can you see my questionnaire? No? It's visible. 
Uh, what 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 you're viewing present? A word document or a SPSS uh, uh, sheet? Yes, it's a sheet. The SPSS sheet. I hope you can uh, see uh, a word document, correct? Uh, this is a questionnaire, okay? So to measure the job description of employees. So these are some of the factors which measures the job description. Uh, somebody has asked, uh, um, so some of you have asked about what are the you know, uh, measures that has to be entered into the uh, pilot study to find out the standard deviation. You should not enter, or you don't want to enter the first part, only from this environmental perception, from EP1 to all the all the statements that you should enter to find out the standard deviation in order to find your yeah. sample size. So this is my questionnaire. So I just collected from uh, 600, uh, uh, 600 or 700, uh, you know, uh, customers. I entered. I entered the data in Excel. Okay. Otherwise, uh, we uh, uh, give and a uh, uh, Google you know, questionnaire, uh, and we collected the data in a Excel sheet. So it's automatically recorded. It will be in Google Forms. If we collect the questionnaire, it will be automatically recorded in an Excel sheet. So how to import the Excel sheet into SPSS? Can you see an empty sheet? Yes, we can. It's an empty sheet, right? So no, what are empty? Uh, no. It, it, no. It, it's a sheet with uh, data inside. Data. Okay. Yes. Can you see an empty sheet? Yes. Okay. So what we do is I'm just importing the Excel data into this SPSS. So for that, what I do, file, open, data. So I just... Here you can find Excel here. Okay. So I'll just click this. I open this. So I just close it. It's already open, so it's not opening. So what I do is I close this. It's already open. So close this. Now I just importing the data, Excel data, into the spaces. Six 
okay we got that data fine so now yes so what i do is so this is that data set that we have so we collected uh, some you know, for the job description questionnaire you can see all this uh, questionnaire ep1 to uh, this some 20 25 statements has been entered and the responses has also been entered here so what is the first thing is you have to find the reliability here you have to find the reliability analysis reliability analysis so somebody has asked how to find the reliability right so analyze scale reliability analysis i click this what i should select i should not select all the general statements that is a part a or we can say nominal data we should select the data from here so uh, let us assume that we have uh, taken only uh, 50 samples okay for the pilot study so i take all the items here i click statistics i click item i click scale if item deleted okay I click continue. I click OK. <laughs> Can you see the output reliability? Twenty items. We got the reliability is 0.8728. Somebody has asked this question, right? How to find the reliability? Hope you got it. Uh, somebody has asked how to find the uh, standard deviation, also, right? Standard deviation. I'll tell you how to find the standard deviation. One minute. Excuse me. System. One minute. I have to connect my charger. Yes, sorry for that. Off test details, general consistency. This is which one is called? Uh, Split off test, uh, test and retest. See, uh, in split off test, uh, what we do is. Uh, we, we use that the split off test for exploratory and confirmatory factor analysis. So what we do is in SPSS, we can do only the exploratory factor analysis. That is, you take the uh, half of your samples and you do the exploratory factor analysis in SPSS. But, you know, uh, the next half or the confirmatory factor analysis can't be done in the uh, with the help of SPSS that we have to do with in the AMOS, this analysis of moral structures. Here in SPSS only EFA, we say that exploratory factor analysis can be done. There's a split off test. Okay. So uh, the first thing uh, what I have told is uh, the uh, reliability. 
And one more thing I would like to uh, share in reliability is if item deleted, you can see here, Cronbach Alpha if item deleted. See, our Cronbach Alpha is 0.872. Is any value is more than 872 here in this? Yes, here. It's 873, but normally close to 872. So no need to worry. If Suppose if you have a, uh, a too much difference here, suppose let us think this 873 is instead of 873, if you have 0.893. So what you should do is the particular statement JS2 has to be removed from the statement from the data set. If you remove that uh, particular statement, then your clone bug value will be increased. So uh, if I remove this JS1 and JS2 statement from the data set, your clone bug value will become 0.873 instead of 0.872. Hope you understood. So this is about the reliability test. And the next one, somebody asked uh, how to how to calculate the standard deviation. What are the measures is to be uh, you know, included to find out the standard deviation? So analyze descriptive statistics. Descriptives. So I should take only the interval data. Only the, for reliability also, we should take only the interval data. For standard deviation also, we should take only the relevant uh, this data, the standard deviation, only the interval data. So you can see it is default standard deviation is here. Uh, we don't want minimum maximum. If you want, you can click. You don't want mean also. You can find the standard deviation. Okay. okay. So. Um, if we have to remove only the statement of the variables which contains different statement to measure when value is more than number alpha, is it we have to remove only the statement? Yes, you have to remove only the particular statement. For each statement, you get a value, you get a clone back value. If you remove that particular statement, you have to remove only the particular statement so that your clone back value will improve. I hope uh, you understood. Right. Analyze so this statistics here. So here, what we do is instead of calculating the uh, individual uh, uh, statements, we normally sum up all the values here. We sum up the values. So here, this is the. And share the output of that. So I selected on this interval scale. And I have clicked the standard deviation. So uh, here, 
Uh, you can see. So what normally we do is we sum up all the uh, factors and we uh, go with the standard deviation. This is the standard deviation value because we have staked time all the individual statements and we got individual standard deviation here. So in actual case, we have to uh, sum up all this. We have to sum up the factors. Uh, for the first factor, we have some four statements. Second factor, we have some four statements. So we sum up that and we find the standard deviation. And that standard deviation value should be uh, you know, applied in the sample size determination. So next is, uh, any questions to know? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, apologies on uh, Dr. Ayavana, on behalf of Doc, Dr. Ayavana. Uh, she's currently facing some power uh, problems. I don't know um, whether it has to do with um, her network or what. But uh, in the meantime, can we just allow her two minutes just to find her ground again so that she can rejoin the meeting. Just two minutes, I'll be communicating with her directly. Thanks. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry for the interruption. Was, uh... We have some power cut here. Uh, any any uh, questions in the chat box? As I actually uh, just to my foot. Okay. Uh, but then how the scale would contain five or seven points? And I think we are ready to. I get your question. A scale would contain five, but then. How the scale would contain five or seven points. Yeah, so you can see uh, my job description questionnaire, right? It has some five scales, five points, five point scale it is. So here uh, you can see uh, this EP1. EP1, okay, if you see the value here, uh, it's from five, one to five. So I selected all the values and I have calculated the firm block value. Uh, yeah, that is fine. Even though uh, in the early stage, of, after completing my PhD only, I I understood all my uh, all the statistical analysis. Okay, in early stage of PhD, definitely it will be very tough. No, only after completing your PhD, you can able to work it up, uh, run out all your uh, uh, statistical procedures here. So don't worry. Uh, so I, I could not uh, get your uh, question. No, 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 it is not a silly question. Even no, uh, I, I, or, uh, I, I told you, right? Even after completing my PhD, I come to know all these things. While doing my PhD, I don't know nothing. I, I don't know anything about this statistical uh, thing. A basic thing I know, but not very much. You know? So don't mind uh, asking questions. Uh, then I have answered your question. Kronbach alpha, so you can see all the scales here from one to five. So I select all the values, then click uh, the scale reliability, that's all. 
let it be five point or let it be seven point, let it be ten point scale. It doesn't matter. It doesn't no, no affect the uh, reliability value. So next is, uh, uh, let us start with some basic analysis. Uh, so I told you it's a descriptive of statistics uh, with the frequencies. So uh, the frequencies has to be done only for the, only for the, this type of data, only for the nominal data, only for part A data, we can say nominal data. So I reset that. So I just start with a descriptive analysis. So here I go with this statistics if you want so here we don't want to add anything and if you want to add some chart i give some bar, bar chart no that is than anything no. yeah. yes and it is by default frequency tables are there click ok and you get the output You can see, you can see all the frequencies here. You can see frequencies for gender, male, female, 210 male, and total uh, samples of 400 out of that male, female, and similarly, age, nature of job, experience, and the bar chart. You can, see. You can get for each all the questions. You can do it separately. You can do one by one. You can do click only gender, then below that, you can get the uh, chart. So, for this nominal scale, we should, you know, uh, apply only frequencies. Yeah, definitely, sir. Definitely, sure. So, I told you, I hope you can see the output, right? So, the frequency table is only for the nominal data. You can't apply the frequency table for the part B, that is the interval scale, the liquid scale, you should not apply. You should not apply the, uh, the, the counts for that, okay? Instead, you have to go for um, a weighted average method that I'll tell you later. Okay, so next one is, we should go over descriptive. The other descriptive is mean, median, mode. So let us find mean and standard deviation. So this mean and standard deviation, you should apply only for the interval data. It, you should not do mean. It's it's meaningless. If you find the mean, the gender, mean for gender, mean for nature of job, it is meaningless. But if you click that and if you bring it on your right hand side, you, if you give if you find the mean, SPSS will give some output, but it is meaningless. So you should know to which data you have to apply, what test has to be applied for that particular data, for the particular question. So I just select the first variable. I, I want the standard deviation, I want mean, I want the minimum and maximum value. It's default, it is there, I click, I click OK. So in the output, you can see an output screen here. So we can see the descriptors for this statement one, two, three, four. For this statement, you can see the mean value and the standard deviation. So normally this mean value, you can see based on this mean value, we decide which statement has more weightage. You can see 3.9, 4.1. So 4.1 means it lies between 4 and 5 in the liquid scale. It's on the higher side. So they are very much satisfied. You can say if it is more than 4, we can say they are highly satisfied. So this EP2 factor stands, uh, it has more weightage when compared to all the factors. So the employees are very much satisfied on the second statement. Hope you understood. Okay. So this is some basic descriptive statistics.
So I quickly uh, do some for uh, another five minutes. I'll just close it. I'll quickly do some uh, basic uh, test, uh, like T test. I'll do a T test for you. So what is T test? Uh, why we will uh, apply T test? Where we apply T test? Any idea? Any idea? Where we apply T test? Because SPSS is, uh, you know, vast. Where we apply T test? Any idea? The basic, uh, you know, uh, analysis, basic inferential analysis starts with the T test. We use T test. Next, we use ANOVA. Next, we use chi square, correlation, regression. These are some the basic analysis that we normally do uh, for the inferential statistics. So, any idea where we apply P test? So, here you see uh, the gender. Gender, we have two options one is male, other is the second one is female. So, you have two categories, two categories, right? So, I want to find I want to find whether scripting and experimental research. Uh, no, no, descriptive descriptive research is it's it doesn't come under uh, t test doesn't come under descriptive statistics. Descriptive is only mean, median, mode, percentage, standard deviation. Only that comes under descriptive statistics. T test. And over all this comes under inferential statistics. Okay, so where we apply p test, let us take this gender. I want to find whether uh, male or highly satisfied or female or highly satisfied. I want to find the difference who are highly, whether male or uh, highly satisfied or female. So otherwise, I want to find out whether the experienced people are highly satisfied or less experienced people are highly satisfied. Okay, here. Uh, here, the job is whether the part-time uh, uh, employees are highly satisfied or the full-time employees are highly satisfied. So when you have a two categories, in gender, we have two categories. In job, we have two categories. Uh, but in uh, I think in ex experience, we have more than two because the value is four here. Okay. So if the categories are two and we want to find the satisfaction level, in that case, you have to apply T test. That is the difference between the two categories. We want to find who has a high satisfaction level. If the categories are more than two, suppose, for example, you can say age. Age, we have more than two, two categories. It's one, two, and three. Might be less than 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50. So the categories are more than two. In that case, we are going to find out which age group people are more satisfied. Let us see uh, whether the less than 25 years or 25 to 35 years are more highly satisfied or you know more than 35 years are highly satisfied. When the categories are more than two, we apply we apply ANOVA test. That's the difference. That's all. So I'll just quickly do only one test here. Compare means. So we are comparing the mean between two categories, mean value of the uh, data. So so you have independent sample t test because it's all we have, you know, uh, two categories. One is male, and the second one is female. So it is they are independent. They are independent. The male is a one category and female is in another category. They are independent. So I click. So I click uh, this grouping gender in grouping variable. Okay. What we are going to test is the overall job description. So this is this comes or we can say job satisfaction. So gender we have to define one and two because one is male and two is female. Options, the things there. So just give continue. I'll show the output here. Within a fraction of a second, you can get output statistics. You can see this is the t test, independent sample t test output. You can see the mean here 11.81, 12.6. So, what we fix, we can have a hypothesis. First, I told you the five steps that we should follow. First step is null hypothesis. Null hypothesis we can fix as the 
uh, uh, I mean, all have male and female have equal male and normally we make a null statement. Okay, we we won't say that female are highly satisfied or male are highly satisfied in a null hypothesis. Normally, we have a, a neutral statement. Okay, so we say that. Uh, both male and female, there is no difference between the satisfaction level between male and female. That should be your null hypothesis. So you have to see this, this uh, significant value. Significant, you can see 0 0.045. So 0 0.045 is less than, is less than 0 0.05. If it is less, then what you should do? I have I have given a table, right? A standard table. You can refer that if it is less than 0 0.05, then your null hypothesis is your null hypothesis is rejected. If it is less, rejected. So you can see here, it means they differ. You have to accept the alternate hypothesis. Then from the value, it is 11.8, it is 12.6. So we can say female have higher mean, right? So we can say this female, female or have more uh, job satisfaction than male uh, employees. So first we should check whether it is uh, accepted or uh, rejected based on the significant value. I, I will share the PPT, that standard table it is. So you, you, you should check this value, significant value with the table value. So in that case, you should, based on that value, we should accept or reject another hypothesis. Then to substantiate that accepting or rejecting, you should see the mean value. So here there is a difference. You can say female are more satisfied than the male because it's 12.6, it is 11.8. So female are more. So similarly, you have to apply the all these slope tests. You should see only the significant value and next is mean value. These are the two major uh, measures to uh, prove or disprove that hypothesis statement. I think uh, it's it's time. Okay. Um, and this two type of research what is the um, uh, I'm not getting uh, your question, sir. Descriptive type of research, not descriptive. See, descriptive, yeah, all research should have both a descriptive analysis and inferential analysis. Descriptive analysis, mean, median, low, standard deviation, et cetera, et cetera. That's a descriptive statistics, okay? Inferential statistics is the t-test, ANOVA, correlation regression. So both you should do. The basic is the, uh, you know, uh, these two uh, analysis should be there in your uh, thesis or in your research. Should one modify the tables on their write-up? Uh, of course, of course. Uh, even I can share you. I can share all the material to uh, Miss Vinolia. So there is a questionnaire, and that questionnaire is uh, how I entered the questionnaire in a an SPSS sheet. And I have, uh, you know, the output of all the tests. I have uh, it in a Word document. I'll share all those things and how an output should be. We should not copy as it is. You should not copy the whole table. The presentation, uh, you know, it should not contain all the uh, these columns and, uh, you know, uh, both of these. So you should edit it. You should copy and uh, paste it in a Word document. Then you can edit it. How do you test a hypothesis that involves about 10 items for a video? Then let it be any number of items, sir. It doesn't mean... Uh, uh, any number of items you can see. Suppose if you have 10 items, what you should do is you have to sum up the values of all the 10 items. So you can see here, you can see here, EP1, EP2, EP3, EP4. There are four items for a variable, correct? So what I have done, you can see here, see this is EP total. Hope you got it. If it is 10 items, you sum up all that. How to sum up? How to sum up all the values? So here, what you should do is transform. Transform. Compute, compute variable. 
So I, I give this as EP. Uh, say because EP total is already there, I give EP total. Okay, so I'm just uh, summing up all the values. EP1 plus EP2. Plus EP3 plus EP4. Okay, that's all. Just you're giving some name for that target variable and you're summing up. If it is a 10 items, then you have to copy all the 10 items. You have to sum up all the 10 items and make it as one. Valid, uh, invalid. Uh, here, uh, you should give, you know, uh, there should not be any space here. There should not be any space. I give EPT. Space. It won't accept the space there. So now you see, uh, now you can see that variable here. See here, we got that, right? EPT. It means summing up all the four values we give. Variable view, you can see, and one more variable in enter. Make this a serious. That's all. Okay, so while doing your analysis, you have to select, analyze, compare means, independent sample t test, uh, gender, instead of uh, this, uh, you know, instead of that, I take, I take EP total, EP total. Then options, so I get this, that's t test. I hope you understood. Is there any any other question? So I think it's time to stop here because a lot of uh, no, uh, we should have a separate uh, session for this SPSS data entry and other thing. So if I uh, know what is the real requirement from your side, I can help you out. So this is just a uh, demo for the SPSS uh, under the methodology. Actually, I'm not going with the SPSS uh, demo. The methodology. How we test the null hypothesis? Yes. I told you this, uh, you know, the first frame the null hypothesis. What is the null hypothesis? I told uh, the gender, right? Male or highly or male, the satisfaction level of male and female or same. That is your null hypothesis. And what is your alternate hypothesis? Not same, correct? So how we test that? We apply the t-test to test that. So the t-test, so we have applied the t-test and we have seen the result also, uh, the output of that. Yes. From the output, based on the significance value, we say we accept or reject because the value we got in the uh, t-test is 0 0.045, correct? So if you can see this, uh, This value. So we got it is 0 0.045. So here that value falls between this, right? P value. Significance value is nothing but P value. 0 0.00011, 0 0.05. So our P value is T test. In T test, we got it is 0 0.045. So it falls in this category and we reject the null hypothesis at 5 percentage level, which means it is significant. <laughs> we reject what we reject. What is our null hypothesis? Or both are same. Both male and female have the same, uh, you know, level of con uh, satisfaction. That we are rejecting it. We are rejecting that hypothesis, null hypothesis. It means obviously we have you are accepting the alternate. What is alternate? Yes, there is a difference. So that difference can be found from the comparing the mean value. So in that mean value, we can see we have seen it is 
uh, greater for female but lesser than the male right 12.6 for female and 11 point something for male it means female or highly satisfied than male uh, i hope i have answered your question uh, is there any other question Any other question? So you take, uh, you can have this table. So that p value, you do the test, uh, compare that p value here. You can see, you can you check the p value where it falls. Then based on that, you can make the decision here. It's a standard table. So based on the value, you either reject or accept. If it is greater than 0 0.05, you accept. If it is less than 0 0.05, you reject it. If it is, if lies between this at five percentage, if your p value lies between this, then it is at one percentage. That's all. If it is one percentage, it is highly significant. There is a more difference. Only one percentage error is allowed. It is there are the differences of was. That's all. So I think I can close my presentation here. Uh, if you have any more questions, uh, please. I hope you have learned something like, you know, the sample size determination, reliability, and the basic uh, analysis, descriptive analysis. Inferential analysis, uh, again, it takes one day uh, for inferential analysis. Uh, Vinolia, you can uh, just check if they have any questions, uh, then I I'm ready to answer for that. Uh, if not, then uh, we can close it. Okay, thank you so, so much, Dr. Havana, for the wonderful presentation. Huh. It was a very nice presentation indeed. And uh, you can tell by the engagement that um, people really learned a lot from you. It was, um, it was a very, very interesting session indeed. Um, as uh, Dr. Havana has said, um, you can access some of the, um, the, the soft copies uh, through my email. You can just email me for your, for an example, if you want the PPT slides and so on, you can just um, send me an email. And um, if you do have um, more questions that you'd like to ask, maybe you have forgotten to ask something while she's still here, you can just email her. Is it fine? Uh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely fine. fine. I'm ready to help yes. you. Yeah? support you at any time. Okay, thank you so much for that feedback. Yeah. Uh, you can just email her. I think on the PPC slide, it also has her, her email address. So that's where you can reach her for more information that you'll be seeking. And um, I would like to thank everyone for their participation within the session and um, the way you engaged today. And um, it was a very, very interesting indeed. So um, we do have more sessions like this. I will confirm with you the following date on our social media platforms. And also I will email you um, the details of uh, other upcoming events like this. And what I do know is that we also have Game Changer for, for, for um, I mean, the supply chain management Game Changer that we, we host once in a month. So you can just join us on the 27th, which is Tuesday of this month for our SCM Game Changer series. And uh, if you need uh, the recordings for this session, just to, reflect back on what Dr. Uh, Yavana Rani was saying. You can access them on our YouTube channel and also on our social media platforms. We are African Institute for Supply Chain Research and that's where you can access all um, the recordings for our sessions. I would like to uh, take this opportunity once more to thank you so, so, so much, Dr. Yavana for coming through for us and uh, also thank our audience for being here today 
And uh, without wasting any more time, I will just hand over to you, uh, Dr. Yavana Rani, just to make a few comments for the closing. Before like before we close, just make a few comments or That's just wonderful. you know guide them on the way forward. Thank uh, you. Thank uh, you. Yeah, thank you, Uh So, Kelly, uh, the session is, you know, uh, it's quite interactive, and uh, I, I felt happy that uh, uh, more questions have uh, flew uh, inside here. Uh, so, I would like to answer more questions because we, uh, we uh, had only, of, look, only one, two hours. Uh, and it's uh, impossible to cover all the tests in the SPSS. Uh, so one thing that I'm just feeling guilty about that, because uh, if I have uh, some more time, I would have uh, uh, no, explained it uh, more clearly, all the tests. Uh, anyway, I I'm ready to help you at any time, and uh, if you can arrange a, a separate uh, session for the SPSS alone, uh, I can make them to how to enter the data, everything I can do that. Uh, it, it has to be for, no, for one or two days, it may be to learn the basics of the SPSS. So I'm really thankful to the team here, uh, the, the, the faculty members, the, the research scholars, and the head of that institute, and especially Vinulia, and uh, my special thanks to uh, Professor Ravindra Sir, Rana Sir. Uh, thank you so much uh, for being uh, connected with you. <laughs> thank you so much, sir. I'm really happy to see you here. So it's uh, everything this happened because only uh, because of uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Ravinder Sir only. So I should be thankful to him uh, and of course for for the African uh, Institute for this section. Uh, also, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, Melodia uh, and the uh, heads here. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Yavana. Um, actually, um, I was just thinking since you couldn't cover everything today, uh, maybe I can just check an opening on when we have a free date that we can accommodate you just to come and uh, do a continuation of today and, uh, you know, just to touch up a few things that you couldn't um, touch up for today. So, but that one I'll have to discuss with you and agree on that. So um, I think our time has exhausted, uh, but it was a very uh, learning session and it was very wonderful. We learned a lot today and um, I would like to thank everybody and have yourself a good evening. Thank yeah, you so thank much. Thank you so much. Yeah, somebody has asked us about, they want to learn the data analysis. Uh, no, comparing means open-ended question. Definitely, uh, because uh, you should know the basics here. So that uh, I started with the research methods, the concepts. Uh, these are the things that I have to cover. Yes, uh, uh, obviously, I'll do that in the next session. Sure, thank you so much. Okay, uh, thank you once again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Here it is. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.